gets that way with paper. Yeah. Are these more? Hmm. That gave her a nice idea. Yep. Uh, did you get, did you get them? Yeah, there's more. Do we two more packages? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think she's up and running right. Can you see it? So good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday, March 6th meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission. Would the clerk assist me with the roll call? Uh, Chairman Harley. I made it. Uh, Vice Chairman Margiata. Here. Clerk Roberts is here. Mr. Hughes. Here. Mr. Eichel. Here. Mr. Hammer. Not here. Mr. Homicki. Here. Mr. Dean. Here. Mr. Allard. Nope. Uh, Mr. Edwards. Here. Ms. Antoniak. Here. Mr. Silver. Here. All right. So there are 10 of us here tonight. Uh, that is one more than we need. Do any of the three alternative alternates that are here tonight uh, remember who was last sitting out? I think I was, I believe, but that was my recollection. I know. So between Yolanda and Dave, would one of you raise your hand and say, I'll sit out this time if it comes to a vote? That's what we're talking about. I'll sit out. Thank you very much, Yolanda. Okay, so the other nine of us are participating if there comes to be a vote. <clears throat> so moving on. Uh, 3.1, item 3.1, a public hearing for application 1974-18-Z, Alan Hoffman, seeking a special permit in accordance with section 3.6, Point G, point four, come on up, Mr. Hoffman, wherever, uh, Mrs. Hoffman. Um, this is for an accessory structure, a 288 square foot garden shed, which is larger than permitted at 447 Main Street. So welcome. Um, if you would introduce yourself and then give us, you know, a summary of what you're up to and what you'd like. My name is Elizabeth Warren. I am um, the wife of Alan Hoffman who submitted the uh, um, application to put up a 12 by 24 Classic Cape uh, Avocado Green by the Barnyard in Ellington. Um, we have already received permission from the Historic Committee. I have passed around additional information of where we'd like to put the shed, which would block our view of the motor vehicle maintenance, garage, and storage facility. Um, at the present time, we have a shed on the property that will be demolished. Um, it is in a terrible condition. Uh, we have a huge yard. So um, it would not diminish our yard at all because of the, uh, we have almost three quarters of an acre in our backyard. Um, I think uh, we are at least 20 feet from the north property line, at least 30 feet from the Department of Motor Vehicles. Um, we're asking for permission and hopefully we might be able to use our garage um, if we can get this shed in. Excuse me, why didn't you, why don't you use your garage now? Because it's filled with stuff that can't be in the shed. <laughs> <laughs> like my garage. Right. <laughs> All right. My only concern was uh, why is it as big as you got it? Uh, even though I've been down there and I see how large your yard is and uh, that kind of thing. You want to <coughs> comment on that? Yes, I, I. For our size lot, I don't think it's too big. We've had in the past. We have a playscape. We've had monkey bars. We have a small um, basketball court, which now we have a fire pit on, and we've had a trampoline, and it still did, did not diminish our backyard. So I don't think this shed is going to diminish our backyard. I don't think you can diminish your backyard. It's huge. And then beyond that, you have uh, over the waterway, you got the, the state property, which is full of cars. I assume they're all state, future state cars, or they're holding them for some reason. Yeah, if you see one of the pictures we have, I put where the center of the shed would be, that will block, hopefully will block our view of motor vehicle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there. it would, it would. I, wa I walked your lot, uh, it's very nice. Uh, uh, father, I think, somewhere, maybe was sitting up front. Uh, <coughs> then a few weeks ago, <coughs> uh, here, and uh, I was impressed with how big the backyard was, how small the old shed was, and kind of falling apart, so makes sense what you're doing to me. The reason I bought the house was the backyard. I hated the house, but I liked the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Other questions for the applicant? Yeah, that there's a what was that? Existing grade, no fill, and I put up any additional fill. 
the um, site barnyard is going to do the site inspection. So they're going to put the stone down and they're going to dig up portions mm -hmm. the portions and put the stone down. So and then we can save that topsoil because we have very good topsoil down there. And is it going to be lit any uh, electricity or no. lighting? Yolanda. Um, I just had a quick question for you. I, and I agree with Commissioner Oikel about the fact that it makes sense what you're trying to do because you definitely have a really nice big backyard and, and situating it that way really will um, diminish your view of the DMV. I think that's what you have back there. Um, my question is, were you planning to cut down any trees at all when you're installing uh, the shed? No. They, we, the part you see is where... Um, there are no trees, so they will block it's that just part. There, the rest of the trees, <coughs> um, and actually some of them are our neighbors. The walnut trees in the back are our neighbors. Okay. We're not planning on cutting yeah. down any trees at all. Okay. If they fall down, then another story. Dan. Okay, thank you. Dan. Um, because is the size exceeds what we have in, in the, the regulations, have you discussed this at all, the placement with your neighbors? Oh, they're all in favor of it. We had one neighbor actually came to the historic um, committee meeting last week. Okay, so you have discussed it with your neighbors? Yes. Okay, that's, that was the question. Right. Okay. We ta actually, no. our neighbors letting us use their driveway to bring the shed in. That's important. Did the, did the historic uh, commission say anything particular to you or request They anything? said this is definitely a shed that needs to be demolished and they <laughs> approved the new shed. <laughs> You know, you almost deserve this shed because the backyard is so large and you had to mow it probably for quite a number of years. And you ought to be My father-in-law mows the lawn. Tom? Um, in addition to uh, you know, size restrictions for accessory buildings that, that are in the regs, uh, the regulations also have uh, lot coverage uh, maximums uh, within it. Have you done the calculations in terms of uh, how much this would uh, 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 add to the coverage, the lot coverage of, of your of your property? No, I haven't. Okay. But my husband has assured me that last year we bought this huge tent. He's assured me we can still put up the huge tent in that yeah. backyard. Peter, so has this uh, Peter, Peter's, look, Peter's looking it up to help you answer okay. that question. So I don't. If you, if you, did you get a copy of the um, tax map, the GIS map, this this colored one? Uh, I did. I didn't uh, look at it extremely closely. So. Yeah. So, so if you if you yeah if you look at the uh, as as was mentioned, the lot is uh, significant in size. Yep. Yeah. And you can see the ratio between the house and the accessory building. Uh, it it will not even come close to. It's very small. Yeah. It's very. small small by comparison so it's uh, in, in those cases we uh, because it's so obvious we don't even require the the calculations to be conducted so okay. thank you yep is there anybody from the public wishing to speak on this application All right, thank you. so uh, any last questions for the applicant or make a motion we close the hearing thank you second the motion thank you gentlemen all those in favor say aye Aye. Aye. And Yolanda is the one who's uh, sitting this out. So the hearing is closed. Make a motion we approve application 1974-18Z as submitted. Second. Any comments, discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Go build your shed. Thank and you. And enjoy it. <coughs> All righty, moving on to the second public hearing, 3.2, application number 1972-18-Z, RM Realty LLC, seeking a zoning text amendment. This is in accordance with section 10.1.F to section 2.3 definitions and 5.2 principal uses to add a section 5.1 medical marijuana dispensary. And you would be the applicant. Would you introduce yourself and uh, summarize for us what is going on? Hi, my name is Reno Mazzucato. I'm the applicant agent um, representing RM Realty. I am submitting before the uh, commission a, um, an amendment, I mean, um, 
to modify and amend the regulations in the town centered zone. The town centered zone is a small swath of land that runs basically from Church Street, which is in the corner here, and it runs almost to the car wash. Uh, Stillwold Street is the uh, Stillwold Road is, or Stillwold Drive. Um, what we're planning, what we're uh, proposing is for a medical marijuana dispensary. Currently, there are no regulations on the books anywhere in the town for this use as a, as a, as a use at all. We're proposing that this is a that we that we would be able to add this use to the town centered zone, but in uh, but with with the respects to having a thousand foot separation from any churches, uh, places of or organizations of um, worship, any schools, in addition to any other dispensaries. So from the Corpus Christi property out, it brings you just about to Wells Road. It brings you just, just past Pelton's, which is the new right, which is the right aid. This will give the, the town control to place the dispensary, if approved, in a small, pro, a small section of the town. The town center zone is small, uh, the, thousand square, the thousand linear foot separation isolates it further, and then even further than that, it, uh, 1,000 feet separation between dispensaries will allow only for one dispensary in the town. Other towns have been making arrangements for dispensaries. They're making provisions in the regulations to allow for them. Um, we, this was something that was visited back in 2014, so I'm reintroducing it now. Um, I submitted to you folks uh, maps. You guys like the maps? There's an overlay of the entire town. The red area is the town centered zone. The larger map uh, that's a little bit zoomed out. Did you guys not get it? Oh, no. I think there's on the other end of it. No, uh, the larger one. That's a, that's a, that's this a, that's a, one. That's a focus in. The, the yeah, the larger one is there. Oh, nice. oh, Peter, do you have another copy? I'm sorry, what do you want? Do you have another for? copy for the larger map of the entire town? Um, this is the entire town, okay. There's two maps you submitted, is that what you're Two asking? maps, correct. Yeah, there's, there's, a, one that's, there's one that's overall town. Overall town. Then it was and the town center. An internal yeah. section. Yeah, so yeah. This, the red, yeah. that's the, that's yeah. the blow up and that's the entire town. Yeah, they have it. Looking at the entire town, the town center zone is, is, a, is a very small section of the town. In 2014, this was presented to include in, or encompass more zones. We, we shrunk it down to give more control and more <coughs> stringent placement for dispensary if further approved. Furthermore, the dispensary will need special, per, special permission, be special exception, which will be further approval to, to actually open a dispensary in the town. So it will need to be presented once again before the town. I went, be, I went ahead and uh, requested information from the police departments from the seven communities within our state who do have dispensaries. I also submitted the responses from the police departments to, to, uh, to, the, to, the, to the commission. Do you have a copy of that as well? I didn't receive responses from all the communities, uh, Waterbury and Hartford did not get back to me, they were too busy to respond. Um, the town of Brantford reported no, no, very little criminal activity other than a broken glass on, on one occasion. Bristol PD, no, 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 no criminal activity at all. Milford Police Department reported fire alarms and a petty theft. Uh, South Windsor, no criminal activity at all. And then Mottenville, Uncasville, uh, there was normal police activity, no more, no less than any other business in the community. So the, the, the business itself is not, a, is not a business open to the public. It's not a business that yields um, foot traffic other than prescribed users, by, uh, prescribed users by physicians who are licensed by, who are, uh, the, the, the users are prescribed by physicians and the physicians are by, by for um, ailments that the state approves. I also submitted a, a list of ailments for medical marijuana use. We, I do have a speaker here who is a, is a prescribed user who would like to speak after me as well. All right. Questions? Okay, so that's, that's the end of the presentation? Yes, sir. All right. Questions for the applicant? Uh, I'll start it off. So how would this benefit the residents of Wethersfield? 
how like it would benefit the residents of Buzzfield like any other business in town, sir. This is a this is a use that's that's legal by the state but not by the town, so it's not permitted by, at all in any zoning regulations. So we're attempting to include it as a permissible zone or a permissible use within a specific zone. It would you'll, it would help the, the residents as would a pharmacy or as would a doctor's office. So, so Peter, um, the proposed amendments, the, the actual text per se, has the town reviewed it and do they have any specific thoughts uh, regarding what's proposed here and in particular what it looks like compared to other towns that have um, lifted their moratorium? So I, I prepared a <coughs> memorandum for you uh, dated March uh, 2nd, which um, summarizes the proposed language. For those of you who were on the commission back in 2014, this language is uh, nearly, uh, nearly identical to the proposed uh, language uh, back in 2014, except for the fact that it's the town center zone. Um, and in, in most other respects, it's the same language. It has separating distances, as was mentioned, it has standards for security, um, and has the general special permit uh, standard. So um, we were actively involved in that language at that time. Uh, this language could you know, be tweaked a little bit, but I, I don't see the need for substantial um, changes to the proposed language. We did, if you look further uh, at the memo, we did analyze um, the separating distance and how many properties would ultimately be left. So the town center zone, um, as was noted in one of the attachments, which is the red area highlighted on the zoning map, uh, in essence has 32 properties uh, uh, that exist today. Uh, with the separating distances applied, I think at the end of the day, there would only be seven properties Six. left in the zone that would be eligible for the special permit. All of them are located on the south side uh, of the zone, uh, basically south of Wells Road. So if you're familiar with that, there's the mobile station, there's the diner, there's the uh, small strip center with the paint shop on the corner, and then there's a parcel owned by uh, Connecticut Light and Power in the back, and then a couple of other smaller parcels. So those are the properties uh, that would potentially be eligible if you applied the 1,000-foot separating distance. I did also provide you with some statistics uh, that uh, are readily available uh, on the state of Connecticut's website as it relates to uh, Connecticut's medical marijuana program. Uh, uh, for the record, there was information provided to you on um, the debilitating medical conditions that would qualify, uh, so those uh, are available to you. I did also provide you with some statistics on uh, the present situation uh, uh, of medical marijuana in the state of Connecticut. As of February 4th, there are 23,410 registered patients in Connecticut, uh, with Hartford County leading that number with 5,774, then followed by New Haven County, and then Fairfield County comes in at 4,753. The number of physicians in Connecticut uh, that are registered with the program is 826. Uh, I, the only reason I provide you that information, when, when we were here back in 2014, those numbers were dramatically uh, lower. Um, as was also mentioned, right now there are nine dispensary facilities licensed in the state of Connecticut. Uh, you have a list of those communities. Uh, it's eight different communities. One of the communities, I think it's Milford, has two dispensaries presently. We did reach out to each and every one of those communities. Some were more responsive than others. Uh, we did look at their regulations. Um, some of them, instead of 1,000 feet, only have a 300-foot separating distance. Uh, in, in summary, uh, the approach that communities have taken in, in Connecticut are, are pretty much all over the board. Some are highly uh, restrictive, some prohibit, but others treat it like a retail use or a pharmacy with no special provisions. So uh, there is no one-size-fits-all regulation in Connecticut. So I think this proposed regulation with the separating distances is probably on the more restrictive side, uh, just so you're aware of that. Uh, we did also talk to other communities that presently do not have dispensary facilities, just to get a flavor uh, for those regulations. It is a, a, a hot topic again. When we looked at these back in 2014, that's, that's when the program was rolled out. 
So there was a lot of activity going on there. Now, the state is now opening up additional licenses, so it's a hot topic again. Uh, as we speak, Avon, Cromwell, um, I believe Glass North Brantford, Meriden uh, are all going through a similar process of deciding how they want to regulate uh, these. Uh, so, um, as I said earlier, it's it's all over the board, um, but it is once again something that many communities are are wrestling with at the same time. So. I don't know if that answers your question in no, specificity, but that's a summary of what we, we found um, uh, that's going on recently in Connecticut. So just to differentiate um, between the dispensaries and the production, does is there anything in this new language that would open up production opportunities? No. Is it specific to dispensaries? Specific to dispensaries. Uh, last time around, I think we were talking about uh, what they call grow facilities, but this regulation, uh, we've taken the position that right now, without a regulation, neither a grow facility or a dispensary facility is permitted in Weathersfield. Uh, the applicant is not uh, proposing a grow facility, just the dispensary uh, facility. So um, the uh, in essence, uh, the grow facilities are still not permitted here in, in town. And this does not deal with that at all. All right. Thank you. Other questions for Peter as of a general nature, or do you want to start asking? George? I'm ready to start asking a couple. Good. I have a question for Peter. Going back to 2014, did you look at other sites, including the Berlin Turnpike, and why is the Berlin Turnpike uh, not on the list? Is there any reasons on why the town center was the only parcel we looked at? The applicant. This is the applicant's. This is his application. So we it's a did not request by the applicant to focus on the town center specifically. Being Correct. Eligible. And we're here tonight for the text, in addition to the possible approval. Of no, the applicants? just for the regulations uh, that would uh, uh, allow the use in the zoning regulations. There would have to be a subsequent special permit application submitted in the future after if if you were to approve these regulations. Uh, that application would also be subject to another public hearing. Uh, there are so certain notice requirements um, that would be required if they proposed a specific site, and then you would review that application to determine if that site was suitable for the use. So the applicant, by initiating this, uh, attended to the issue on us not having anything in the text within our regulation. That's correct. When I met with the applicant, I explained to him that we've taken the position since when the, the statutes were first amended that without regulations, in essence, these facilities are prohibited in Weathersfield. Okay. And that's the reason why we don't have a specific address within this uh, that's this correct. for tonight. So this is a general regulation amendment, uh, and then a, a, a specific application would have to follow at a later date. Great. Thank you. Yep. Peter, so the wordage will be for this geographic location only? Just for the town center zone. Uh, yeah, so it would be added to the table of permitted uses. If you look at your uh, zoning regulations, if you look specifically at Section 5, uh, which has the table of permitted uses. This use would be added uh, not only to the definition section, but to the business zone as a particular use allowed only in that zone. So the other zones would still uh, prohibit this use. Only the town center would permit it. A question for the, for the applicant. From a marketing standpoint, is Weathersfield needed because According to MapQuest, there's a center within six miles of here, 11 miles from here, and 14 miles from here. Why would you have the need? Well, there, when, Hartford County has the largest population for prescribed users. So from being centrally located in Weathersfield, you'll be able to draw from a number of surrounding so communities. you 10,000 people in the city. I took the numbers he said. That would be 10,000 people in the city of Hartford who have the need with four centers in the area. Correct. Are they standing in line at the uh, Hartford one? Or the and one you, cannot the enter, you cannot enter a facility unless you're a prescribed user. It's prohibited oh, to, that, to allow I anyone see. into the facility, so, so they, I've never been they inside. Have to, they have to make an appointment, basically? They, they come. They have to provide their credentials, be, be validated at the, at the, at the check-in, which is a reception area. Once they're checked in and, and validated, they're allowed to enter the dispensary facility. The dispensary is only open to prescribed users or their caregivers. Right. 
what happens when somebody they'll buy and then they got to come back in a couple months after their prescription runs out? They're, they have to go uh, back to the store. Then uh, do you have an appointment system? Uh, is that the way it works? Or? There's appointments. There's it's as if you were to it's fill sort a prescription. Like a doctor's office. Like a do it's a quasi doctor's office pharmacy where you would right. have your prescription filled. Are they having problems in both the Hartford and South Windsor facilities with uh, Hartford area? Uh, I was told. People, I mean, I was told by the commission. By the numbers coming in there, they can't accommodate them. I was told by Consumer Protection that they cannot keep up with the demand. They cannot. They cannot. They're opening up from I mean, the. They're, they're not. They're not. There's not enough. To people. There's not enough stores to to suit the the, the needs of the of in the. In this area. Statewide, the population triple. Or was it? They went from. Ah, uh, yeah. But I, I'll <clears throat> beg to disagree with you because I, as a state employee for 35 years and worrying about the geography of this state, um, I, I found the two locations previous out of the nine in the mm -hmm. state in South Windsor and Hartford are ideal locations. They're large, particularly the Hartford <coughs> one, large and all commercial or industrial, uh, right off the highway, easy to get to uh, for, for the whole region. And uh, and, the, and it's very close to us. And then South Windsor is right over the bridge, the Windsor Bridge, and uh, on Route Five. Those, those, two, those, two, facilities those two facilities are closer together. Those two facilities are closer together. These are good commercial area to locate in, whereas yours is backed up to. How close is the nearest house to you? There's uh, there's two uh, uh, residential abutters only uh, by res by a, a ten foot retaining wall. Now I know you're not. Our, uh, uh, town planner said you don't have a site. Correct. But you do own. Correct. That location where Sherwin Williams Paint is. Correct. Correct. And you have a vacancy there, right? I now, do have a vacancy in that property. Right yes. next to it. And that's probably what you're thinking about when you. It's an opportunity. It's a possible this. opportunity. What's that? It would be a possible opportunity. Yes. Yeah, but that's it, right? In the area, I, I don't see. Well, no. There's the there's a half a dozen properties in the area that are available. <laughs> So there's actually six six it, facilities. And that's, in that, oh, there are. There's six there's six properties that are called potential sites. I didn't see any vacancy signs up, and I well, thought they were all filled properties. Well, well, George, I think he's saying so there's six parcels that could potentially be used. Potentially be used. Right? Could, but, could, but again, we have distance issues too uh, with locating <clears throat> if you do more than one, right? Well, there's, there would only be one in town with the distance <laughs> requirements. Set forth at a thousand feet. It was written, uh, so it was more stringent. So, so the application is obviously not site specific, but we are aware of the property that you own, and I suspect that when we get into a discussion with the public, um, there may be questions about the way such a facility operates. Even though you know someday we're going to have another discussion about this, but maybe uh, you, as the applicant, could take five minutes and describe how a dispensary operates. Okay. Dispensary operates like a doctor's office or like a pharmacy. It was a, there's a system where. If if you're having problems hearing, are you having problems hearing? No, I just mind that I can do that. Then no, you no, you cannot. Oh, we, there will be a time when we in, when we invite the public. So let me let me just go through how the process. And I apologize if something. Um, the way the process is going to work is we're going to talk to the applicant and let and uh, and if you will try and draw out all the questions that we have, and then we're going to turn it over. And, and take input from the public um, on the matter, and then we'll and then we'll go back and, and get answers to questions that may come up from the public, and get answers from the applicant to the extent that they can. That's that's kind of how the process works. So I apologize. I thank you for m having me describe it. All right. The way the way the dispensary operates, you you, you come into the you come into the facility, you're checked in as a patient, you're you're qualified as a as a prescribed user. Once you come into the facility, you're allowed to purchase product, purchase the medicine. The medicine comes in all forms. It comes in flowers, which is a, a product that you would smoke, something people are more familiar with. It comes in a tablet form. It comes in an oil form. It comes in uh, some misting, uh, top, uh, oral mists, oral mists. It comes in uh, edibles, which would come in uh, jelly, jelly beans, uh, gummy bears, cookies, brownies, and cakes, different items of that nature as well. All the items that are sold in the dispensary are purchased from the state growers. There's only four state growers in our, in our state currently. There, um, there's one in Portland, there's one in Avon, there's one in um, 
I want to say West Haven and that there's a fourth. I'm not sure exactly where, where they're located. But everything that's sold in dispensary is purchased from the state grower. All products that are purchased and resold are not allowed to be um, compounded, which means you're not allowed to, to tamper with them. The only person that can tamper with the product or open the product is the prescribed user, the patient. You're allowed a certain amount of product that you can purchase. You can purchase up to an X, X amount of product. So, so the owner of a dispensary, um, it's, I, so my question to you, tell them who, who operates it, right? Who's a licensed professional? The professor? dispensary is operated by pharmacists and pharmacy technicians. Okay. And the product is purchased, packaged? Purchased, from pre -packaged the producers. From, the, from the growers, okay. the producers. And it comes on a truck just like any other product? The delivery, is, is, it's, that's a really top secret. It's hard to get the tip information. They're not, they, don't share that, they don't share that information with the public. So a little bit about the security maybe of the production Security is, is hefty. There's <clears throat> the security in the, in, the, in the facility itself. There's glass. There's door. There, the, all the product is stored. It's a class 2 narcotic. So all the product is stored in a, in a, is in a, 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 D, a, a DEA approved vault. The vault is a secure room that's got motion. It has vibration. It has cameras. All product is counted and inventory throughout the day multiple times, and it's system checked at the end of the day, at the beginning of the day. All product is to be stored in the vault if a pharmacist is not on site to dispense the product. So if the pharmacist is out to lunch or there's not two pharmacists working, the technician is not allowed to serve the product or serve the medicine to the patient. Okay, and, and I'm obviously asking questions that I know the answers to, or at least I think I know the answers from the previous presentations, but not everybody in the room heard sure. those. So how about the security of people coming into the facility? Security coming in, once you, you've, it's a, there's a, a, a two-way door system, basically it's like a receiving area where you receive the patient, you validate their credentials, you, you, you prove that who, they prove who they are, Customers who would come back often, you, they'll have to check them in. They'll be more, more, um, more commonly known by face, but they're also checked in. Once they're checked in, they're buzzed into a, a second door system. So they're not allowed to enter the dispensary itself unless they're uh, qualified and validated. So there's, so there's, I think this is the right term, an anteroom, room, then a secondary the reception room, and then room there's the, the, correct. a third room that where you've got all the stocks or correct. whatever. Okay. Other, other questions, that, especially that might draw that out <clears throat> So the security system is the same at all the dispensaries in the state of Connecticut. Is this security system that you, you're describing, is that laid out by the state of Connecticut? Laid out by the state of Connecticut so for the requirements. It's mandated how you buzz them in, this whole process Correct. you're describing. It's the same pretty much at all the dispensaries. Yes. Set out by the state. Okay, so we have consistency there. The next thing is, um, since you're licensed, are you subject to a random inspection? Any, any day of the week that the, the state can come in. Correct. Unannounced? Unannounced. They can check your inventory? Of course. Your control systems? Correct. Your security systems? Correct. Whatever they <laughs> mandate, so these are all outlined. So video in. surveillance has to be stored on database as well. And they can come and audit you at any time, the state that is. Can the state remote access to your, uh, not, that's not yet? I'm not certain if they can or cannot. I don't believe so. So everything you're talking about right now is laid out by a party other than yourself. Correct. Your licensing. <clears throat> These are all requirements by the state of Connecticut. And I assume, because I'm kind of relating it to like an auto license where before they let you open the door, they come and they do a walkthrough and check everything. Sure. You need a, you need a layout. You need a blueprint. You need, a, you need a, uh, to show that you're, the, distant, the clear distance is between uh, places of worship and, and, and schools. Thank you. You're welcome. Who is RM Realty LLC? Myself. You what own what are my holding companies? You, you own the real estate. Yes. Um, not the real. Not, this doesn't. This real estate doesn't hold that. Doesn't own that property though. Okay. If if you're forming an LLC or a corporation involved with this, I'm just asking about the mechanics. Is it is it a, a lease between RM Realty LLC or will it be a separate company corporation? RM, this RM Realty does not own the property at Wells Road. <clears throat> That's owned by a different entity. Uh, and ultimately, if, <clears throat> excuse me. Ultimately, if a business were to open in, the, in that facility, the entity that owns the business will lease space from the entity that owns the property. Okay, so there'll be a, a different corporation involved, Correct. and that'll be a signed lease with the state of Connecticut? Signed lease with the, sta with the property owner. The, property the state of owner. Connecticut doesn't, have, doesn't have own the property. Okay. They and wouldn't have any, any rights to the lease. Just as a general question, um, the rental rates 
for this type of facility? Is it a gold leaf rental rate? I mean, is it a it'll be a market headset. rent? That's it. It'll be market rent. Sure. You don't. You wouldn't get it. more because of the intensity of the if use. You were paying more money than somebody maybe will vacant, and you'd open up in one of the other facilities. If the rent was one hundred fifty dollars a foot, maybe the maybe the the um, the rate there's, would be a different. there's a there's a pornograph of these. The, the lunch net would go out, right. or the used furniture store would go out. So now the market, the rate would be would be dictated by the market for the most part. What's it cost for the security systems and to renovate the leasehold improvements on something like this? It's a Couple, substantial investment. Probably four or five hundred thousand dollars, maybe. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd rather not share that information at this point. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Uh, does this language limit the size of this facility in terms of square foot? I mean. Obviously, the registered patients has grown to 23,000, but five years from now, it could be 50,000. Uh, and obviously, this facility could expand. Does this language limit the square footage? It does not limit no square footage, no. Thank you. It's, it, it, runs, it runs in accordance with parking ratios for regular or traditional retail use. Dan? Can you tell me something about the licensing procedure from the state of Connecticut? Uh, I, I noticed you're here first. Uh, have you applied to the state of Connecticut for no, the license? Not, not yet. That's what are the license? One of the things that troubles me is I'm unaware of any of the state regulations concerning uh, the sale of medical marijuana. Um, and I'd like to certainly familiarize myself more before I would approve, you know, be want to get into uh, proving this, what we were approving, and what the state regulations are. I see nothing here. We can get into that in our discussion, but I'm, I'm curious as to what are the regulations for licensure? Regulations for licensure, you, you, it would be similar to a, a pharmacy or a liquor store where you'd have a, a, a backer, you'd have an owner, you'd have a pharmacist, and you'd have pharmacies and a pharmacy staff. All employees must be registered with the state. You submit an application before the state of Connecticut, and they and they 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 select or they award licenses to <clears throat> specific applicants based on qualifying um, criteria within the application process. Is there uh, a potential of a public hearing concerning your licensure, so the public would have a specific input concerning a specific license? License. That's that's what the state of Connecticut. No, that's not open to the public. The state. Pardon? Would, the state of Connecticut ultimately decides who they award the licenses to. Do they hold any public hearings? They allow for a public hearing for no, they do not. like a liquor license or anything no, else. No, they, they do not. Is there a chance for a member of the public, like in a sale of alcoholic beverage, to file what we call a remonstrance to to appeal to the state? Not that I'm aware of. No. The state has only awarded a handful of licenses, and they're only avoid, they're going to only avoid award another handful of licenses. And this turnaround. Thank the state holds the trump card there. The state is either in favor or not in favor of the applicant, and they weigh them against other applicants. We'll get into the entire discussion. Yeah, that's fine. And one question, Peter: Were the um, other uh, addresses within this zone notified about what was going to happen? No, you, your regulations, uh, un, unlike a site-specific location, you, your a regulation amendment does not require uh, notice. There was the standard notice uh, in the newspapers, uh, you know, and, and placement. Um, there was certainly uh, quite a bit of uh, media coverage on, on this hearing tonight, but there is no specific uh, notice to neighbors. Okay. Jim? So maybe you can answer this question. So the, the state is now going to grant a handful of additional license to, uh, after thinking over what Commissioner Edwards and Whitefield said about demand, basically marketing questions, what they were asking. I, that's how I interpreted it. So the state is actually, by granting the licenses, they're going to calendar out where the need is, what the geographical Correct. best use is. So it's really not even up to you. It's just however many applicants there are, and the state is going to decide. They'll decide which areas they'd like to place them as well. How they want, yeah. Okay, so it's really not even your power. It's the state who is ultimately going to decide what Correct. is best for the state as far as locations, geographic. But a, 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 one of the caveats of the state licensing requirements is that a site needs to be approved before you can submit. So they're sort of forced, a site, a municipality needs to have an, you need to have an approved site or approved location before you can 
submit your application. Thank so you. they're pressuring this, I believe, the municipalities to start to accept the regulation and make provisions to allow for it. Thank you. That's actually what I was going to follow up. I don't know if you were here, Jim, but <clears throat> yeah, you absolutely were. It, it was a frenzied time as all of the applicants or hope to be applicants were before all the towns right. looking for places to be. Yeah, because I look at this, this is kind of like backward, reverse from a normal project where he needs to get approval to just apply to get the license as opposed to have a way in. Right, right. So what I'm confused at, do you know if the state approves by location or by person an application? Uh, in other words, both. It's a full application review. So that if this commission amended its zoning regulation to make your premises a permitted use at that location, would the state automatically have to grant the license if they thought that you were uh, justified in getting it? Or no. could they refuse it because they didn't like the location? They can refuse it. Why they don't like him? Well, so. it could be many, but I'm just talking about well, the Well, they don't location. like the, if the, if the proposal wasn't professionally prepared, it wasn't done properly. There, there's a number of, it, it's uncertain as to their process. It's weighted on a point basis and on, on the different aspects of the application. I, I say that because like in a liquor license, as long as the zone was okay, um, and you didn't have, for, for example, a package store, you can only have so many package stores in one town, but if we had a need, as long as the zoning was okay, they didn't care about the location, it was the person. Uh, and I was curious as to whether or not the state, and I'd like to have an answer, with <coughs> whether, this, whether the state looks at the location, approval to the location as well as the individual, or just one or the other, and I, and I don't have an answer. So, I mean, I have, I have what I think is an answer to the fact that they, they need a location identified, whether the state goes into the next level and, and, and uh, decides whether it's appropriate or not. That's, that's a different that's, story, That's right? what I was trying but, to get at. I was, right. Or another one is more appropriate. Right, right. Yeah. Mr. Commissioner, so let, let me ask you this, Mr. Mazzucato. So let's say this zone, hypothetically this zone change happens. Then even for you to apply, you would have to, before you apply, you'd have to come with a site-specific plan, all your prints and everything Correct. to kind of have us approve it in hopes that the state. Correct. But the state, you may go through all these steps, spend all that money, and the state may deny you. Correct. And that's it. Which, which goes to my thinking that right. the state does not put a, um, a decision-making on the site. <laughs> the town has done that already. They're just making sure that it's done first. Yeah, that's that's my concern. Can they, sure can they deny you because of the location, location or right. deny you just because you are not a qualified person? And that's to me, is an important question that I don't have an answer for. It's awful quiet, Rich. Yeah, on purpose. Okay. It's a hearing, not a talking. You know, <laughs> my experience in state government on this kind of stuff and, and yours, many others here, uh, one or two, the, uh, the location is important to me. Uh, and I would think they would compare one site with another as well as how many are in the area and what the need is. And you've cited the need in a great a Hartford County. But they may feel other parts of Hartford County are more in need. Milford has two locations within the same community. Need. And they may have a better site. You no, know, they get all that stuff working together to come up with their selection. Sure. And how many are they supposedly going for this time? I heard between three, three, and three, three or nine. Between three and ten. How many? Between three and ten. Mm -hmm. All right. On top of the and they're years. also adding more and more diseases to who can get medical marijuana, correct? I believe so, yes. Yeah, I almost read every about every couple, three months, they're adding two or three more. Okay, thank you. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take one more question, and then I want to turn it over and get some input. So that somebody else to speak. You passed out okay. something okay. when you came in tonight from the consumer protection. It was just a couple pages about the qualification Those requirements. Are, correct. Those are qualifying uh, conditions for medical marijuana as a use. Answer some of those. I went on the consumer protection site and there's eight bullets. Is there any reason why you didn't include those? Board of physicians, dispensary facilities, minors, primary caregivers. In addition to that, there are uh, about a primary caregiver registration process and how thorough that is. I, didn't, I did not include that, no. Okay, it might have been helpful anyway. On 18 total other states with medical marijuana 
programs. There were seven public hearings going up to February of 2018, which I think would answer some of George's questions going back to August of 15. Um, the bullets are really good in the tabs that they have that you can go into the public hearings, but um, that some of the detail I think could be answered. This, these are, I'm mentioning these because I think they'll be helpful for a few further discussion in addition, in addition to a 22 page PowerPoint presentation about that. So for future reference, you might want to dig a little deeper, mm -hmm. find that, and mm -hmm. for the public reference anyway, and there's quite a bit of information on the consumer protection. We're not board. trying to approve the use or the, or the, the, the pharmaceutical the use of the product. We're trying to get the product that's already been approved in, in a use in the town. Within the 20 plus or minus bullets that Peter Gillespie put in his memo, I think, yeah. So I agree. I just think this is supporting data that would be helpful. Future reference. And the last time I read the inch and a half manual of the regulations for the marijuana center, and you'll find there, they define certain things, and there's a lot of open ends in it. And just, so I'm just take a look at that. All right. So uh, if you'll allow us, we're going to invite the public up to offer some points of view. Um, kind of just by raising your hand, we'll come up and allow people to speak on your topics. Anybody who would like to come up first? Tom? Good evening. Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. Um, I think uh, if, if I read it right, what, what we're talking about tonight is just really approving the zone, not, not whether uh, medical marijuana is, uh, you know, the right thing or not the right thing. So uh, I took a look at the uh, 2013 Plan of Conservation and Development that was prepared um, and it describes Weathersfield's vision for development, one section specifically about the Silestine Highway and another section specifically called the Town Center Node, which is now this TC zone that we're discussing running from uh, Church Street to Wells Road, very small section of town. And in that, in that document, they did a survey of a lot of the town residents. They asked what the town wanted to see. And the survey came back that said they wanted to develop that town center area into a blue back square type development, but on a smaller scale and to encourage village-type development patterns that got digested and put into some policies and tasks. Uh, one of the policies is to create this town center node uh, to promote additional development desired by residents, walkability, restaurants, stores, activities, and destination uses. I personally don't believe that a distribution uh, facility for anything, doesn't have to be marijuana, is not what the residents were looking for and not what this report was driving at. Uh, and the tasks were to change existing regulations and or to implement new regulations to help create this Weathersfield Town Center. So what's before you tonight, I believe, is a proposal to reverse those changes in what was, uh, what was the goal by putting this uh, um, medical marijuana facility uh, approval for the zone, not a specific property, but <clears throat> my second concern is, and again, I'm not debating the, the use of uh, medical marijuana. I think most of the 22 causes that I looked at seem very legitimate and they're just cut and dry. You have cancer, you have glaucoma, you have Parkinson's or epilepsy, and uh, 
medical marijuana has proved to help with that. My bigger concern is that on the horizon, it, the state of Connecticut may decide to legalize marijuana for recreational use. And I think if and when that does occur, the likely distribution centers for recreational marijuana would be already approved by the state, uh, these dispensary facilities. Uh, one last thing I want to add, just in the back of your mind, medical marijuana is not legal in the United States. There's 29 states that have approved it, but it's not legal by the federal government. So you're, you're, by approving this, you're kind of going against federal law. And just something I think you should consider. Let me just make a comment. You commented on the town center. The town center goes down to Wells Road. The only- Just past Wells Road. I it don't goes to the, that the town center goes, to, it goes from Church Street to Wells Road. No, it goes to the car wash. Hmm? It goes to the yeah. car wash. Does it go further down? Yeah. yeah. And that's where they want to locate. That's the town center? Okay. All right. Okay. I thought it went down just to Wells Road. It's a very small section. <coughs> okay. Thank you, Tom. South of the Wells Road. Yes, sir. Good evening, Joe Sawyer, 30 Hedgerow Street, uh, Wethersfield. Uh, number one, it was brought up before, and that is I don't see how this dispensary would benefit Wethersfield. Okay, that that didn't uh, come out. Uh, I mean, tax-wise, uh, I just don't see how it would benefit uh, Wethersfield. Two, there are other dispensaries in the area, Hartford being one, that people can go to. They don't have to go to Westfield, they can go to Hartford. Three, as a former substitute teacher, the location of the dispensary would still be too close to schools. Too close. Four, parking and traffic would be an issue. Five, you know, and I feel owners and staff of all dispensaries should have their backgrounds checked for any criminal activity. I mean, is this being done with the other dispensaries? Does the state just, just willy-nilly give them uh, you know, an application, approve their application? Are their backgrounds being checked? And, it, you know, and if so, who has the responsibility? Who has the responsibility? So in conclusion, I don't support any special permit. We don't need this in Wethersfield. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes ma'am. My name is Therese Zerbiansky and I live at 46 Mommer Court in Wethersfield. I am a patient who takes marijuana. Okay, I'm also a registered respiratory therapist and a nurse, okay? I want you to understand that for you to get medical marijuana, it's not very easy, okay? There's no reason why this amendment can't be changed in the town of Wethersfield, okay? We have vape stores. How many vape stores have you proved in the town of Wethersfield? This is killing these kids. This stuff is going in their lungs. It's killing these kids. But you approve it. How many package stores do we have? That's the problem. I live on Mommer Court. I see these bottles, these little nips that are all over Mommer Court. I lived in the town for 30 years. I never saw it before, OK? This issue of marijuana has to come to Wethersfield. We've got package stores. We've got vape stores, OK? But we can't have marijuana. The marijuana dispensaries are so legally watched that you cannot get in there. 
If your doctor approves you, okay, because you have a certain ailment, which I do, okay, you have to go to a marijuana doctor. The marijuana doctor has to fill out all the information for the state of Connecticut, okay? Then after you are approved, you turn around and you, have, you get your card. This is the state of Connecticut's card, okay? You have to wait 60 days for it. You have to go down there, okay? The state requires you have a picture taken, you have your fingerprints taken, you're checked out by the FBI before you can even get your card. Then you go down there and you make, a, make an appointment with a registered pharmacist, you sit down, she directs you as to what kind of forms you need, okay, what kind of medication you're, you're able to use, okay. You can't even get in the door, okay. You can't get in the door unless you show the girl your card. She buzzes you in, then you go to the, after she takes the information, you go to the next, next window and you go through. Is the dispensary? Down in Weston Street, busy? Yes, it's extremely busy. If I need medication, I can call ahead of time like a regular pharmacist. They package it, you go in, they package it, you get the package, and the package is sealed just like the, from the pharmacy, okay? And, and you pay for it, and out the door you go. So there's, there's no reason why we can't have a dispensary in the town of Weathersfield. I mean, you approve vape stores, okay? They're perfectly fine. We have kids that are getting sick in the town of Wethersfield all the time, okay? I've been to the high school. We've had a discussion with Riss Moore about narcotics in the town of Wethersfield. It's not the marijuana. It's the fentanyl off the streets. It's the marijuana off the streets. These are where these kids are getting it from. I think you need to look at this this uh, a little bit closer. We need to have something. We need to have a dispensary in the town of Wethersfield. And I'll tell you something. I know for a positive fact that there are 75 people that are predominant in the town of Wethersfield that go to the dispensary on Weston Street. And because of the HIPAA law, you're not allowed to say who they are, but they are predominant people in the town of Wethersfield. So I think that a dispensary would be an asset to the town of Wethersfield versus no dispensary. Can I ask uh, any questions? You gentlemen have any questions you'd like to ask me? Not at, not at this time. So thank you okay. very much. Yes, ma'am. Josephine Fienza, resident at 76 Westwood Drive. I have uh, become a resident here 10 years ago. I initially lived in Hartford, Connecticut, where I was prompted to move out of Hartford due to the increase of drug activity that took place in the city of Hartford. To me, changing these regulations would be very detrimental to our community. I brought my kids into this schooling system for that positive education. And yes, there is narcotics. It's a huge problem in our schooling systems, not just in Weathersfield, but everywhere. And we as parents need to unite and come together and say, when does it stop? This year alone, I think we lost three teenagers alone with narcotic being their cause of death. To me, marijuana is a gateway to opening of other drug use. I work in the medical field. I've worked in the medical field for 30 years. I have see patients who request for prescriptions. I see physicians who are very lenient on providing that prescription just because they, I don't know what the reasoning is, but that prescription is provided to them. Anxiety is becoming one more factor as to marijuana use. How many of our children have been diagnosed with anxiety disorders already? When we place a dispensary on Silestine Highway or anywhere else that Mr. Mazzucato is thinking about placing it in, what kind of message are we sending our children when I've spent countless hours as a parent telling them that drug use 
has no role in one's life other than a cancer patient. And it should be regulated and used for cancer reasons to help this lovely lady with her pain. But we have plenty of those. Town of Hartford has them. It's less than five miles away. There's Dial-A-Ride that provides these transportations. I just don't understand why we would even consider amending or making any changes to our amendment because this town of Wethersfield does not need a dispensary that can bring riffraff from everywhere else. I hate standing next to someone who smoked marijuana. It stinks. I'm sorry. The smell is horrible. It stinks and it sends a wrong message to my, ch my children to stand next to someone who smoked marijuana. It's disgusting. I'm sorry. But yet we're telling that we can't smoke in public, but we're going to allow for dispensaries to come into our town of Wethersfield. I'm against it, and I'm sorry, but he, Mr. Mazzucato is a business owner in Hartford. Why doesn't he just request for a license in Hartford? There's plenty of opportunity for growth there to decrease the lines to take place in, in his residence. Thank you. Thank you. My name, is, my name is Carrie Coughlin, 7 Barrington Drive, Wethersfield. Um, I wasn't necessarily going to speak tonight because I know you're looking at the wording and not the actual permit, but based on what I've heard, I felt it was important. I'm here tonight both as a resident and a healthcare professional. As a resident, I think it's important that we remain open to businesses. This is a fully legal business. This is very highly regulated by the state of Connecticut. Um, I think you heard a little bit about the security, but this is not something where people will line up outside the door. Um, medical marijuana is certified by physicians. I work in the healthcare industry. I have never seen a patient or a physician who certifies be lax or lenient. They take their, their medical license very seriously in who they certify. Um, in addition, I've seen many patients who have benefited considerably from medical marijuana where other medicines have failed them. And so in terms of, you know, why, why can't people just go to Hartford? We're talking about people who are certified some very ill people, people for whom a car ride to Hartford could be a major trip for the day um, and cause them additional symptoms. So I don't see why we wouldn't want to have our residents or people in nearby towns who are certified for this have another option. And at the same time, it would be a business opportunity uh, for Wethersfield. So I am in favor. Um, I take offense at calling patients who are certified for medical marijuana riffraff. They would simply be other state residents who've been certified for this important medical tool who would be coming to a highly regulated dispensary to pick up this tool. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, David Kirk, 149 Broad Street. I spoke at the last uh, meeting when you had someone else uh, coming about this, and uh, my feelings since then have uh, changed a little bit. You know, I, I know someone who has used medical marijuana uh, for pain and with limited success and, uh, and, uh, or relief. And, uh, and, th and that's part of the issue. Part of the, and I heard someone say, you know, it's ha highly reg regulated medical field. Well, most medical associations don't endorse it. You know, they, they might support more further research, but that's where we are with m medical mar marijuana research. You know, we don't know how effective it is. We don't know the side effects of, of uh, long-term medical marijuana use, especially on children. We, uh, uh, and when they, the farmers make this, and they, and they send it to these dispensaries. We don't know how powerful the, the, the it, that's the question I, I would ask the, uh, the person who uh, wants this open. Is there any way of measuring the potency of, or the consistency of the marijuana, how much uh, THC is in it? I don't think there is. You know, there, it's not like a regular drug, a drug where you could, uh, we're making it this percent uh, of uh, dosage of milligrams of uh, this chemical. Marijuana is a plant, I don't think, it goes to those stringent uh, 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 regulations. Uh, uh, that's one issue. Uh, also, uh, 
uh, as I said, uh, marijuana, as a, another speaker said, it's not legal. And that's the, the main thing to me. You know, it, it, it's uh, uh, medical marijuana, that's sort of like moving into sort of like a de facto legalization. You know, it's not legal, but it's kind of legal for some people. And, and, and it, it opens the door, and I don't want to see Connecticut be, be uh, 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 make marijuana legal in our state. I don't, I don't think it's a good idea. I, I think it's a bad idea in other states. And, and uh, we don't know the long-term effects, but I do believe that, as one person said, it, you know, it's a drug, and, and, and people use it illegally, and uh, uh, as much as I sympathize with those who need it, you know, uh, there are other places to go. I, I'd rather not see it in my neighborhood, especially with the, with the, the legal issues on, on marijuana. It's still illegal, but in, in, in medical marijuana is still at a testing stage, and so, so I, I'd rather not see it in my town, although I, I, I could support anyone getting it if they really need it, if they think it's helpful, but I don't want it in my town. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, Deborah Cohen, 73 Church Street. I really came tonight um, to listen. I, w I wanted to hear people's thoughts from both sides, and I know that this is going to be an, on um, an ongoing issue. What I would like to suggest is that we think about this in terms of comparing it to all of the pharmacies that we have here in town. The pharmacies here in town sell all sorts of prescriptions, all sorts of drugs that have to be highly regulated, that we don't want abused by our children or the adults in our, in our community. Um, things that folks n must have prescriptions for, all of the things that would apply to um, access to medical marijuana. And I'm just curious about why we're, not, why we're not likening this situation to the pharmacies in town. If anything, a medical marijuana facility would be more tightly controlled. You can walk into a pharmacy now without any without any ID, certainly you, you need ID or whatever to get your prescription, but there's, there's, no, there's no safety regulations about who can enter. I don't know that anybody is complaining that we need extra police um, surveillance around our pharmacies because there are drugs being sold there. So all I'm suggesting is that we look at this and try to level the playing field somehow and ask the same questions about this that we would ask about our pharmacies. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. I'm Linda Skodala, and I'm from 75 Concord Circle in Wethersfield. I wasn't going to speak myself tonight either, but after hearing responses, I'd like to give my opinion on it. Um, in speaking to the woman from the healthcare field who stated that doctors are not laxed, I know an acquaintance who specifically went to an MD in Torrington who gives out medical cards like it's candy. And people, go, and they, people know of him and go to him. And, and this gentleman is on parole and because you know, he can get in trouble for being on med marijuana, he decided that because he had his Achilles um, torn and had surgery, well, let me get a medical marijuana card this way I can get you know, away with it. And sure enough, it, it, he got it. And like I said, um, do, you know, doctors are a little bit laxed. Not everyone, everyone you know, doctors are concerned about their you know, license and so forth, but there are doctors out there that are laxed. Um, me coming from a personal experience whose son smoked marijuana and his excuse was anxiety. And it's the, that's what's going on these days with the teenagers. Everyone has anxieties and everyone has issues that they can't deal with. So what do they turn their, to their escape as marijuana? I'm totally against it. Um, we don't need it here in Wethersfield. I also grew up in Hartford and um, I moved to Wethersfield. I pay taxes and I just feel there's crime everywhere. Um, but why bring it to Wethersfield? There are other locations where they have it and they can go elsewhere. That's just my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'll come back to you. Sorry, I saw you late. Yep. 
My name is Elizabeth, and um, I own the property behind the Sharon Williams Plaza on Bird Road. Um, we moved here from Hartford three years ago, and we have two young kids. And I just, I'm not here to give a bit speech, but I want to let it be known that I am against um, this dispensary. I understand that it's not a set location, but I'm pretty sure if you guys um, change the zoning that an application will be set for that property. And um, that's not what I want in my backyard with my kids. Thank you. Yes, sir. How you doing? My name is Joe Ergolani from um, 136 Stillwall Drive. Um, I, I like a lot what Tom said, and um, him and I, I agree on a lot what he said. And, and I'm here for, for one of the things that he brought up about the uh, recreational use, if it does change. And I guess my question is to Peter. Um, if the zoning change does go through for um, pharmacy or the pharmaceutical and they do make the change to recreational, can the zoning just be for medical use only and not for recreational? Yeah, there's not a, a, a hard question to answer until such time as the state does what they're ultimately going to do and, and whatever regulations they put in place in other states. Uh, where they have uh, legalized recreational marijuana. Uh, it, it varies from state to state in terms of what the follow-up regulations can be. Um, so it it's, remains to be seen how that will uh, pan out in the future. So sorry, I can't really give you a more specific answer. Somebody else? Yes, sir. My name is Wayne Urbanski, my wife spoke earlier, and I've been to the facility on Weston Street, and I never saw any people who are riffraffs. I saw people in wheelchairs, crutches, older people, younger people. So I think the idea that it's a bunch of riffraff is bogus. And uh, one question for you, Peter. This gentleman here said he didn't want it near a school. There's a vape store right across from the Silas Dean Middle School. Does the town of Wethersfield have any regulations about vape stores? No, uh, and just just for the record, this commission did not approve that location. It was simply uh, an administrative approval. Someone came in and wanted a building permit and were issued. So there are no specific regulations right now about vape shops uh, and or, um, for that matter, tobacco. So um, it's a whole different so animal. Because, the, yeah. because a friend of my wife's son spent 300 bucks on a vape pipe there, used it once, and then ended up in the ER. That's all I want to tell you. Anyone else at this moment? It's not the last opportunity. Look, okay. My name is Joe Marvillafane. Um, my wife, Marvillafane, spoke a few seconds ago. We live directly right behind the Sherman Williams Plaza, so you can literally hop my fence to get to the back of that building. My concern is security. You can put all the security you want inside. But how about the back doors, people breaking the windows? I don't want them hopping in my backyard when the cops come. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Would the, uh, unless there's somebody else at the moment, would the applicant come join us? All right. So uh, I didn't hear a lot of questions. The one that I did write down specifically that I'd, I'd look for you to uh, respond to is um, the potency of the of the product. The products are measured in a scale that all, that's, that's all compounded from the fact from the manufacturer, which is the grower. It's all regulated by the state of Connecticut. There are percentages of uh, THCs in the, in the products. Specific values, I'm not too certain. I'm not a prescribed user. I'm sure the, the patient would sort of tell you the different doses and different uh, potencies. That's my. If, if I'd invite her up to, to describe to describe that further, it'd be helpful. Sure. Okay. I should wish. Can I briefly just for one minute? Actually, he's inviting you I'm up. I'm inviting you up to to discuss the potency and, of, and the levels of the product. I 
on each bottle that you receive, okay, it's, it's locked. It's got like a, a, like a stamp over it, and you break it. And on the bottle, okay, it will tell you how much THC is in there, how much you're getting, how much tablets it is, whether it's oral or wh how, you, how you receive it, okay? So it's marked. It's marked the same way as a normal bottle would be from a prescription. It gives you the name of the narcotic, how much it takes, how much THC is in there. It's regulated just like a regular pharmacy you would get. And I wanted to add, too, is that say, for instance, I'm sick. My husband has a marijuana card so that he can pick up marijuana for me. If I was sick and he went there, they would not let him into the dispensary, okay? So he had to go through the same procedure I went through with filling out the application, saying that he was going to be my caregiver, and he has a card the same way as I do. So it's very controlled, just like a regular prescription. Thank you. That was my understanding, too. That's why I wanted you to respond to that, that it is actually measured pretty precisely, just like most other drugs. Exactly. And, and, and it, it, it's not. It's not all. It's, the marijuana is the THC is consumed. It's consumed <clears throat> all different methods. It's not only smoked. It's in tablet. It's in sprays. It's in topical cookies. Image, cookies. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Um, were there other questions that other people heard that are specific? Because I, I was just going to ask you to, you know, you heard a lot of comments here. Do you have any specific thoughts? Um, to their responses, and maybe I guess the security issue. Are there constraints about windows, doors, and all that kind of stuff in the security measures? The, the building is secure, from, and the inside is monitored on the exterior as well. There's surveillance cameras all around, all around the interior, the exterior, all the all the hallways, and everything that accessing the building. Can, can it even have windows? And the front and the facade, yes. It can have windows. Okay. But it's all locked and secured. Yeah, actually, there's no breaking into restrictions. the restrictions. It's um, it's there's a vault. There's a, a secure vault system there as well. The vault that were uh, the vault sizes are between eight and twelve feet, and twelve and twelve feet would be a, a, a sizable vault to start the business with. Okay. And the vault is tied to this to this uh, the police department with redundancy with two alarm systems. So. Um, and then also, the, all of the departments that I re reached out to questioning security and if there's any issues with the, with the dispensaries there since the inception 2012, none of the pharmacies had any any issues, and you have copies of all the responses from the, the chiefs of police offices. Um, so then general responses, perhaps, if you have any to the concerns that were raised. Um, I, I, I do recall um, uh, Ms. Mazzarella raising the issue of the, of the zoning, excuse me, the, the town's planning document and how this particular zone was intended to be um, a town center walkable type of a thing and how this type of facility does or does not fit into that kind of a, a, a zone in, in the town. Well, the, the, the town center zone is a small swath of land that's occupied and pretty well developed at this time. So unless they were to be torn down and rebuilt like Blueback Square was done, it would be pretty almost, it would be nearly impossible to do so. In fact, our building on Wells Road was done in and around the time that the regulations were posed and we did work with Peter to develop that into, into a nicer looking building in the area. Remember, you know, this was back in 2012, Peter, 2011? I remember. We veneered the, the original building with the same stone that we did the, the new building to make it look like one cohesive retail shopping center. Okay. The shopping center currently houses a medical use. We have, we have a hanger prosthetics and orthotics, which is a medical, it's a, they do prosthetic limbs for patients who suffer from anywhere from, say, um, coming back from the military without a limb, or folks who lose a limb due to uh, diabetes, or just all, all, all sorts of the, that industry. Thank you. I think I saw Jim. Yep. Uh, one of the questions that was brought up, if you could help us with this. Uh, someone said background checks, who's going to be working there? Is there any? It's all regulated by the state of Connecticut. Anybody working in the dispensary needs to, be a, needs to be registered with the state. They do background check them, and they do check them all out. You're not allowed to work in a facility unless you're registered with the state of Connecticut to be an employee of the facility. You, you need to have a badge. You need to always be wearing a badge with your credentials on it. You need to be checked into the facility through a, a double door locking system. In, in effect, it'll be more secure than a pharmacy. 
I don't know how much what kind of break-ins at Correct Pelt at uh, Rite Aid Pharmacy or CVS or Walgreens, but I would imagine it'd be fewer, if any. This is a side note. If, if I can't remember, let's just talk site specific for a second. The intersection of Wells and Silas. Was there ever a drugstore in the building? Uh, that building, no. Across the street on the corner where Max Beeples used to be a small pharmacy drugstore. It was called, uh, what was it called? Silestine Drug. Drug. And Silestine Drug was, a, was I, wanna say, I don't want to say turn of the century, but I think like 1920s and 30s, it was a pharmacy druggist with a, with a pop shop in the corner. Was in this building. Was Wells Pharmacy yeah, there? It was a toy store the, la the first time I remember. And I was the, I'm going back into the early 80s, and I was very young. So in that intersection, just help me, so it was Wells and Silestine Drug were both. Yeah, right, 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 okay. Jim, you're dating yourself, huh? I remember Creative Playtime. Yeah, right, sure. <laughs> <laughs> creative Playtime, that was a toy store, yes. George? George? First of all, I want to know my colleague, Jim, how long you lived in this town? <laughs> how long is your family? You all your relatives? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm having trouble with a couple things. True. What evidence do you need? You said something before about the need for another local dispensary. And I mean local. That includes Hartford, South Windsor. might even be Bristol. Uh, I'd like to see some evidence, maybe from the state on that. I don't, but I wouldn't have privilege to that. You can't get that. that. No, HIPAA regulations, they, they don't won't, take. They keep that secret? Oh, they're a grand fund. Oh, boy. Patients are, are, are uh, I work for state government taboo. too long. I understand these stupid things, but go ahead. Uh, uh, the need and demand. There's a need if, there's, if, they're putting out the, if they're putting out the request well, for Well, I bids. know you say that, but I, I want to see some evidence of it. You're not, you're not giving me If that. they open 10 I'm, stores and, and nine closed, then the evidence is line, not that good. That was answered. No, they're not. They have appointments and so forth. But you're saying people can't get their prescriptions from the existing facilities. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not. They say they need more of them. They say they need but more. But I'm not sure I trust the system. Okay. Well, they want to they want to double they want to uh, double the footprint in the state. That's your and then yeah. another second question I have: Are there any other local towns? This probably goes to Peter that you're aware of that are trying uh, to have facilities. I'm not Avon, talking, Peter. Yeah, Avon about, is uh, you know is Cromwell or is uh, Newington or uh, even as far as New Britain. I believe because Glastonbury is as well. I question whether it needs to be here because we're pretty close to two other facilities and they're not, you know, they're five or ten minutes down the road. It's ridiculous. How about, you know, expansion of this area? Never mind. I'm not going to say go to Eastern Connecticut, go to Torrington or all that stuff. But I know the state. So we did research um, communities in the region. Newington does have regulations on the books. Um, Cromwell uh, is uh, reaching out, trying to determine what they're going to do. Um, I can't speak to Middletown, but um, there are... You said several were there, actually there are, had applications like we have here tonight. Uh, uh, several do. Several have been approved already. Um, there are at least a half a dozen communities that are in the process of writing regulations as we speak. Uh, as I mentioned before, obviously the state's... Uh, uh, has put out a notice that they are willing to entertain some additional locations. <coughs> Clearly, there's a demand. I think the state, when they, it, it's all about who submits applications and where they're located geographically. Uh, for us to sit here and say this location is, is not the best location remains to be seen because they may not get other applications that are better suited than this. So the state is going to take all of that under consideration. There have been dispensaries approved by the state which never came to be. So that's also a scenario that could unfold for various reasons. So uh, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty as to what the future of this is. And as I said earlier, it's really dependent upon uh, other individuals such as Ms. Right. Mr. Mazzucato and whether he they go forward to the state of Connecticut. I agree. And what, what on that one point? Uh, now, why don't you want to locate in any other part of this town? Why not any because other part? you own that building. I have an own property in that section of town as well. So in other words, trying to <coughs> establish his own, say, over in the Silas Dean 
uh, I mean, up in the Silesteen somewhere or out in the Berlin Turnpike, doesn't make sense, right, to you? The commission could approve a, a larger swath of property. I think that limiting it to one for the t for town would be ideal or suitable for a town of 30,000 people. <coughs> Unless if, it were to open the, if you were to open the regulation up to include, say, the Berlin, I'm not sure the zone of the Berlin Turnpike, but the previous application included two other zones that gave hundreds of locations, viable locations. At that point, when the commission won't have any say on how many you can have in the town, it could, it could be 42nd Street in New York, but of marijuana stores. So if we expand the footprint to include multiple zones or a much larger zone, you have multiple stores or much many more stores, like package stores. They may limit the number of stores per town like they do package stores. I own a package store as well. They may say Town of Weathersfield has nine package stores. We have nine marijuana shops. No, they shops. won't give you one because we have ten of them and that's all. I that's all you got. And if you one closes, you can apply. If one wants to sell to another party, they can sell. But those ten licenses are almost like badges on, on taxi cabs. If there's no demand, the stores won't survive. So the demand, it's, it's, it's <laughs> And did you think yeah. about um, any other? <laughs> did you or not? I'm not sure. No, you, you oh, own there. that property. In your I thought of another site. I, I thought of an alternate site as well. Peter, from the standpoint of us taking that specific site and those seven, you know, seven or eight properties, are we going to get in trouble with not looking at a broader fruit? footprint from a legal standpoint? No. Uh, some towns um, actually have language within their regulations that sta state that they will only allow one in their community. So some regulations have taken uh, the next step to limit it even further, I think, as Mr. Mazzucato indicated, given the separation distance and the handful of properties, in essence, with this regulation being adopted, if it gets adopted, you would only have one, one in, in Weathersville. After one gets located, there's a thousand foot separation distance to that too. So unless somebody else came in and amended the regulations again, uh, which is highly unlikely, you, you would, if you were to do that, you would only have one. W one in this particular zone. So it's, it's obviously a question that was going through, I, I assume other people's minds as well. Um, I know you can't just pick do a spot zone and have something for one location. Um, but clearly some control on the number of sites and, and, and the idea of the size of the site was interesting to me that Tony brought up as well. Um, I, I can't help but be concerned about the potential for this to becoming recreational <clears throat> and how does that grow and change um, the facilities usage regardless of where it is um, somewhere down the road. Um, so whether the language can restrict besides, besides uh, putting a number on it per town, is, is there a way to limit it to pharmaceutical use only period, you know, that kind of thing? As, as has been, you know, this commission's practice in the past, you can attach reasonable conditions to a permit. Uh, so you could establish if this location uh, is approved, if, if you get to that point, limiting it so that you can deal with concerns like that when it comes to a specific location. So um, I, d I do have to, you know, just follow up on what Mr. Mazzucato said. The last time we went through this exercise, the one of the big concerns was the way that regulation was written, there were all sorts of other locations that could qualify. and this commission was concerned about opening it up too broadly without knowing exactly. This is the other end of that spectrum where it's very narrowly uh, defined. What you see is what you're going to get. So, you know, so you have both of those uh, that you've gone, gone through. And, and, and part of me is thinking, you know, and uh, not in small part by what Mr. Mazzarella said, is this where you want that one to happen? Right. That, that's something legitimately that this commission needs to, if um, you don't think the town center, that's a very legitimate uh, decision that you have to make uh, as a commission. So that is certainly within your realm. Uh, if you feel that the town center is not the place for it, that's, that's, your, that's your prerogative. Dan. Dan. My, let me, let me get my two cents in, George, if I could for a moment. 
Uh, let me start by saying that I have no objection to a marijuana dispensary being located within the town of Wethersfield. I'd like that to, to stand. However, uh, there are many questions which are raised both by the public and by the commission this evening, which I do not feel can be accomplished and satisfied by the application this evening, which is before us. I think, uh, in all fairness uh, to, Ms. Uh, to the applicant, we need a regulation Similar do we have, we have regulations concerning the sale of alcoholic beverages. We have, the, uh, we have regulations concerning the sale of adult materials. We have many other regulations dealing with controversial subjects. I really believe that we need to sit down as a commission and I would propose that we would establish a committee to immediately, just the way we do with signs, we have regulations dealing with signs in town. Um, that we establish a regulation dealing with the sale of recreational marijuana. And within that regulation, we could limit, we could set forth what our, our desires are. And so there is no question uh, in the future as to what the uh, regulations, the zoning regulations in the town of Wethersfield have concerning uh, the sale of of medical marijuana only. And we could limit it to that, and we are not forgetting something which should be put into the application and find out that we approve of this application, and then another instance comes up which is not covered by what we do this evening. I think this, this takes some thought. And for that, uh, I personally feel that before we would act on something like this, that we would set up a committee and work on our, for the adoption of a regulation similar to other towns. Other towns right now, listed by Peter, are going through that process. I'd like to know what requirements other towns have concerning the sale of marijuana. Uh, they may have some good ideas, they may have some bad ideas. We can put that all together and come up with a logical uh, regulation. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know that I disagree, um, but we do have an application in front of us, and so I'm, si I'm sitting here trying well, to figure out how that happens. Um, so, I mean, we can have a, a discussion perhaps with Peter and, and how you carry that forward. Um, we have a specific proposal in front of us. Um, with regards to uh, this, the, the concerns or statement that uh, uh, Dan has just made, I, I think that pretty much the, the state of Connecticut Connecticut has occupied the field in terms of the definitions here of, of what's prohibited, what's not prohibited through their uh, through the state licensure process and by uh, the act of the both the state legislature followed by the regulations and procedures adopted by the Department of Consumer Protection that licenses these facilities. Um, I, I tend to think that 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 the proposed amendment does define the limits pretty well. You know, I, I refer uh, to uh, the proposed amendment section one that says uh, that uh, defines dispensary facility means a place of business where marijuana may be dispensed or sold at retail to qualifying patients and primary caregivers and for which the Connecticut Department of Consumer Protection has issued a dispensary facility permit under Public Act 12155 and sections 21A-408-1 to 21A-408-70 inclusive and is applicable to the regulations of the Connecticut uh, state agencies. Uh, it's further uh, uh, limits it to dispensary facilities subject to section to the provisions of section 511 as permitted by the conditional use special permit so this would still require a special permit procedure to be followed by any applicant. And the, uh, the purpose and intent statement of, you know, further defines it, particularly with regards to the, the concern that I've heard uh, uh, announced that uh, uh, the, the apprehension that uh, a medical marijuana facility may turn out to be simply a dispensary of, of recreational uh, 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 
marijuana, which is not within the scope and purview of this regulation. So I thought, I thought so you were going to... I tend to think that if there was uh, uh, recreational marijuana, it would still not comply with the zoning regulations here, and they would have to undergo some uh, zoning <coughs> regulation uh, here for that kind of operation to be permitted within the, within the town. To my way of thinking, this is essentially a pharmacy that dispenses a particular series of products from one plant. So, so thank you. I, 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 I thought it was on it, and then I thought you were going to throw me for a loop there. <laughs> Your understanding of the wording was, is that it's already con what is proposed does control the dispensary by definition it is for medical only. That's so right. that the growth into a recreational use wouldn't go with what has been written. Dan. I hear what my colleague says. The only thing is we may be remiss that we have forgotten something and we're going to adopt an application. That's my fear. Uh, we're talking about potential time of operation, hours of operation. There are other things which may be pertinent uh, to the approval uh, of this type of facility. And although I am very much in favor of the application um, per se, I think in this case that we're putting the cart before the horse if we approve of this application without first adopting a regulation which encompasses everything and gives this commission an opportunity to give some thought to what should be contained in this a regulation so that we're, we're not missing anything. Uh, can I add something, Peter? Can we legally put provisions in there to sell a product that's illegal in the state? This, uh, yeah, this, this whole conversation about recreational no, marijuana, rec recreational is not, we're it's, getting it's, way ahead of ourselves, as I mentioned it's before. Not, it's, not, it's not illegal. You can't write a right. regulation to, to sell an illegal product. Right. I, in I, my opinion, I don't know. I could be wrong. Dan, this regulation has all sorts of provisions. There's a whole section in here that the commission has the ability to attach plan. reasonable conditions. There's, several, I mean, so to, to go down the road about what might happen about uh, is is probably off off point on this particular subject matter. If if you want to do this or we don't want to do this, we should probably just focus on what's being proposed and, and go from there. We went through back in 2014. Uh, I personally idea? went through an exhaustive analysis. I uh, spent a whole bunch of time looking at the entire community, regulations from all over the place. At that point, there was absolute uncertainty about these things. There was no track record. There had been no license issued. This research that we've done recently, we've contacted every one of these towns. We've talked to the police department. No problems. No problems with the zoning staff and the planning staff in any of the communities that have them now. So there is a track record now of these locations. I think it's up to you guys to decide as a policy. If you want to do this, adopt the regulation. If you don't, then then vote it down. To talk about going through a committee and a, I, 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 I will do that for you. I have done it before but I don't think it's warranted in this particular case. We'll deal with the recreational stuff at the time uh, it ever happens and, and, and go from there. Unfortunately, I wasn't on the commission yeah. when you went through it, so yep. I'm not aware yep. of any of this, and this yep. is stuff is just coming before me. And I, yep. and I, I'm just not aware. It, yes, I'm in favor of the sale of medical marijuana in the town, so it's not that I'm against you know, the, the sale of the concept. Uh, it's that I want to be sure that what I'm voting on is complete and we're not coming back with an additional application. We, this keeps coming up and up. Yep. Uh, so okay. I, well, I think then vote against it. And definitely. Come back. And that's six months from now. Yeah, that's done. Um, just one, uh, one point of clarification relative to uh, uh, Dan's remarks about various conditions and so forth. The kinds of things that he remarked and uh, uh, that would be conditions that would be uh, put into uh, potential regulations uh, would seem to be uh, both overkill and tying the hand of the commission because so those kinds of conditions such as hours of operation are typically conditions that are attached to any approval for a special use permit. And since it is, you know, given the limited nature of the potential locations that would be permitted under this regulation, it would have, in effect, 
limit the number of dispensary facilities within the town of Wethersfield to essentially one. Uh, the first application that uh, this commission would approve for medical marijuana dispensary is likely, <coughs> in all likelihood, to be the only such dispensary that would, would be in the town. And I would tend to think that, that, the, that the regulations that this proposed regulation permits, as well as the other regulations within the town zoning ordinances that empower this commission to attach uh, a variety of, of uh, conditions to any permit that would be given adequately covers the, the arena of, of concern that, that uh, ha has been uh, articulated here. Uh, and again, I just uh, repeat the, 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 the common sense thing that what we're looking here is nothing more than a pharmacy selling a particular type of product for limited purposes that is one that is extremely highly regulated and controlled by the state of Connecticut. And uh, uh, I, 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 the, you know, the officials there have looked at this very carefully. I've uh, gone to a seminar, uh, or a couple of seminars, in which the commissioner of uh, the Department of Consumer Protection has, has you know, addressed a number of these issues. And I'm well satisfied that uh, the, the state's conditions and controls are extremely tight. And I think those, uh, and the evidence really shows that within the statistics that uh, are shown in Peter's memorandum to us about the experience of other towns. Thank you. So, so yeah, but the question is, is it appropriate for the application here, is, is it appropriate for the town center? You know, does it meet the 2013 plan of conservation and development? How does it affect the neighborhood, the schools? You know, I like. I think we need to. In my personal opinion, I'd like to get here a little bit more. Maybe uh, extend this for one more t one more session, uh, just to get our thoughts together. Uh, and but I think we should vote on this application in front of us. I agree. I agree that that's a good idea. It would give me even more of an opportunity <clears throat> after listening to discussion this evening and going through my mind potential conditions uh, to be able to. Uh, to be able to logically vote for it without having Peter to go through uh, the process. I wasn't involved with that process back 2014, but I can certainly spend time in your office and go through that with you. This came out in our packet on Friday afternoon and it's now Tuesday. And it may allow the public one more session to, you know, obviously if they couldn't come here tonight uh, to, to voice their opinion for or against it, because this is an important issue uh, for the for the neighborhood, uh, for the residents of Wethersfield. I do have a quick question for you. Uh, I know there was, a, there was a comment regarding that folks had to drive to Hartford, and that's an inconvenience. <coughs> so that's why it's really a benefit to the residents of Wethersfield. Well, of Wethersfield and surrounding communities as well. Of the the 50, Western Street facility is not in the best neighborhood. Uh, of the 5,800 um, registered users, how many of those uh, are from Wethersfield? If that's they, those, numbers from are not, that's, those numbers are on public knowledge. Not even on a regional county level. They give you county wide. Just county level alone. Okay. Thank you. So I, I'm, I'm going to apologize for uh, changing the train of thought. Peter gave this to me earlier, and I failed to read it into the record. We do have another um, resident who asked for something to be put on the record. So this is from Carol Zemanski. Uh, I am not in favor of this amendment as proposed. The town center is not an appropriate location for this use, nor is the use appropriate mixed in with residential use and or within walking distance and shooting distance of schools. Um, I'd be more in favor of this use in an industrial area and only if appropriate security measures were employed and paid for solely by the dispensary owners. Weathersfield should not bear the cost of the additional police officers to patrol this, uh, which would be open to daily robberies and burglaries. Um, all right, so that's in the record. Um, other thoughts? Sorry, sorry. I'm just going to just wrap my, my thoughts up. You know, a vote for or against this application is not for or against the medical dispensary. So it, to me, it's just if it's appropriate for this town center location. And other for me, other <coughs> conditions that we could read into the approval 
uh, of this. I'd like to re have a chance to review that. I got the impression you were saying we should we you're comfortable voting on this particular one. I would ask for a uh, a motion to extend it to, to one more time or one so more second. So, so so what are we doing though? Okay. I guess why would be my close this right. What are, what are we going to get between now and say two weeks from now? Um, what would we if if we choose to go this route? What are we looking for? What's the additional information that we want? Um, I don't disagree, perhaps, with what you're saying. Um, if, in fact, so what's, what's going through my mind, right, is, is, uh, is this an appropriate location, and how else, if we, if we decided this wasn't the right zone, how else would we um, contain it to one and only one type of thing? I, I guess with the de definitions um, 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 placated by the idea that this is not going to expand, that the regulation that we s settle on would say dispensaries for medical issues only. Um, so, so that makes me feel a little better. But I still wonder whether, and, and maybe I should be asking um, the woman who uses this, um, there are 75, so, so we're told, um, Weathersfield residents, do they care for it to be in the town center where they go? Is it something that um, someone who needs this product and seeks this product out is is concerned about seeking it out in the center of town. And, and so should it be somewhere else, you know, for any variety of reasons, right? I don't know. Do you want to ask Teresa that question? <laughs> I, you know, I'm not in that situation. I don't... Yeah, no, 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 no. That's um, and I apologize if that's the impression I gave in my question. Like, I, yeah. It's, so, your personal opinion: Do you want to walk into the town center to get your to get your prescription filled, or would you prefer to travel to an industrial zone? Go to an industrial zone. Let's go that way. I, 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 pre I don't see I appreciate your perspective. Okay, I don't see so I, I, I need to control for the for the purposes of the uh, the, the record. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Then I couldn't second it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I'm gonna I'm not gonna say no to people coming up and, and offering, uh, if you will, a, a different perspective. But would you come up to the mic so we can control how it's recorded? That's that's what it's all about. No, no, no. It, people can speak, but we need to record it. That's all. So my question is to the lovely lady. As far as the process that um, her husband had to go through in order to get the application for her to pick up the marijuana on behalf of um, of the her, of the wife. Is there um, stipulations? Does it need to be an immediate uh, husband, or how do they grant that process? So a companion or caretaker can go ahead and. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So. I guess just to kind of pick up where we are, you know, the, I've heard it from Tony, I've heard it from Dan, you know, and maybe it would be helpful for everybody. I think it would be helpful, you know, for the public if they look at it. What I think would be useful, I mean, and, and the whole concept of is the town center the right place for it is something that we have to deal with, you know, without additional information from Peter. But I guess I would maybe suggest or ask if we want to ask Peter to assemble copies of the statutes, the regulations, and maybe 
you know, I know the DCP website has frequently asked questions about dispensaries and things like that, just so that everybody's operating from the same knowledge base and it's part of the record of the application. And you said you'd already done the research and the calling around on regulations, you know, for Dan's point so that we can see what other people have done, you know, just basically provide those things to us prior to the next hearing. You know, just so that it's part of the record, so that everybody has the same information, and and you know, if they want to read it, they can. But you know, at least the opportunity is there to, you know, to understand what the state licensing process is and and so forth. Um, and and uh, can I add a little bit? Can he actually go to Consumer Protection and ask some of the statistics that? Don't seem to be available. To no, all questions must be emailed. I, I'm not aware. I think at, at the inf the only information I can have is at the county level, which I provided in the okay. in the memo. Nothing below that. I'm not aware of it. It's if it is, uh, it's not uh, readily any available. Dug into any of this in any way? I haven't heard statistics on a town level, but obviously Are I haven't. Well, I think the concern the is that it, at a certain point it becomes too obvious. I mean, like if Eastford only has one person and you know who it is, yeah. you know, it doesn't really help. I mean, right. like, you know, Weathersfield might have 75, it might have 125. Um, they just don't break it down on that, on that level right. of detail, yeah. at least not for public consumption. And, I, and, you know, and I think that if there, if there is, um, you know, a live round of applications pending um, the information would be posted on their website as to what you know what the criteria are what the application looks like so that everybody would understand what it is that that has to be provided I mean and I, I think that's more a copy job than it is research but um, and did you look at other areas of town uh, as I said earlier, when we did this in 2014, we looked at the entire community. We applied all the separating distances. Uh, I can certainly uh, provide you with that information. It's in a file somewhere. In actually in this area. Oh yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, we spent a lot of time with the GIS system mapping and all that kind of stuff. So uh, that information is public, and I can certainly, if if you find it helpful. Get, get you that information. Well, I think one of the other things, you know, two things that I remember from 2014 was, you know, the initial application was denied for a variety of reasons, but we had also mused about having separation distances from residential properties or residential zones, um, and that that never really, I mean, and then we had talked about a, you know, <clears throat> kind of ridiculous separation district to distance to basically prevent a second one in town but that that was just too transparent to be valid um, you know and, the, and we talked about a moratorium to study it but we got busy doing other things and you know this became less of an issue but I know that that was something we had talked about uh, I, I'll, at that time I'll, I'm sorry I also remember at that application it was talking about the property values being devalued because of the uh, potential for dispensary, but now we've got a history. You know, how does that really affect, uh, you know, the current property values of these nine that are that are here today? So we have actually, you know, statistics we can uh, refer back to. Nobody brought that up tonight. Yeah. So, yeah. Not tonight, but again, we were talking oh, about I know. the past application. Last so, time. Yeah. Uh, and again, my, my big question is, you know, what's the square footage of this facility? And then, uh, you know, how close to the, the distance next? to the nearby residences? Yeah. And zones. The, the only thing we have to look at is you can put reasonable regulations but you have to be able to know that there are locations, if you're going to approve of this, are locations at town that meet the regulation. You can put such restrictions on that there are no places in town that would meet that regulation. No, uh, and, uh, and therefore that's something we have to be very careful of, especially if, if for those of us who are in, may be in favor of um, approving uh, an application for a dispensary. So, so Peter and Rich and, and other land use uh, people, explain to me if, if the criteria were so constrained that only two properties, um, like the last time round, right, and it wasn't transparent enough, 
I guess I understood we could put one now because that's I had that in my in the back of my mind is that we struggled with you know making it so restrictive that you know if it's that's it's transparent what you're trying to do and that you're trying to limit it or, or get it down to one or none. Can you just put one in the specs or not? As I said earlier, some towns have actually done that. And it has been. Are, are you concerned that it will not that it will be challenged? No, because it's no different than the limits on you know liquor licenses and and you know maximums okay. that the state established. So I don't I don't see that as a Mr. Chairman, an issue. That was my only concern with reading through this proposed regulation was I'd like to see one and not two, if that helps. But Peter, will we say this district can have a center, a distribution center? That we're not specifically pointing at his property. No. Say the state rejects his property, someone will come and say, "I'm going to buy my the diner." And tear it down, put up an office building sure. for doctors. That's why it's, I guess, from my standpoint, I have no opinion of medical marijuana and legal marijuana, but um, my opinion is what we're doing to that part of town, because I was on the committee years ago. And I just want to make sure people understand that it's not just pinpointing this one business, it's the whole area. Mm -hmm. In the case, like 100 yards from here, there's a, med there's a blood bank that people don't even know is there unless someone gives you the address. That's why, you know, from our standpoint, we have to look at this as a whole district, not just one po one place. Okay, the hearing is still open. Yeah, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Peter, thanks. Peter, can, can anyone apply for uh, medical marijuana facility? I mean, I'm a retired manufacturer. Can I apply? No, I'd like to, I'd like to think before you answer that people who would, would own uh, a dispensary would be an MD, okay, or people in the healthcare field, okay, people that know something about this business. I don't blame the applicant. I understand he's a baker. I don't know what he knows about this business. So, I mean, that's a concern to me. I mean, uh, you know, a pharmacy, okay, they have the registered pharmacists, they go to school, they get a degree, okay? So we know they are certified. In fact, the registered pharmacist needs to be your managing employee to operate the business for yes. you yes. as a backer. So, and so could I get your name? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Joe Soya, S-O-J-A. And you. I'm a big, one, one, of my, one of the businesses I operate is a bakery. I also own a number of other stores, sir. So my, don't be so blinded by my last name. And he's, he is correct. You need to have a pharmacist as part of the the team that runs the operation so there are license one of the commission members asked for the statutes and the requirements from the state there are they are pretty exhaustive and uh if the commission wants that that information will be publicly available tony i think i that. also in favor of keeping it open you get, peter gave reference to about 20 parcels uh, the nine that have approval but he referenced uh, newington stratford Simsbury, Rocky Hill, Windsor. Simsbury, for example, on October 21st of 13, the zoning board unanimously adopted zoning text amendments. So I think Peter has a lot of info already prepared. I would welcome the supporting data that he did uh, a couple years back. I th again, I want to look at that those seven PowerPoint presentations of the public hearings that occurred over a three-year period already and uh, actually look at some of the text in the area communities maybe three to five would be helpful for me and in concert with all the other data that's on the consumer protection. But I don't, I don't think, we're, we're patient, we're calm, we've spent a lot of time on this already. Let's revisit it and I think continuing it as an open dialogue is helpful for us. To another meeting. Last comments for the evening, Tom? Can I make some more comments? Yep, you can tell, okay, thank you. Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. Uh, I, I'd just like you to consider a couple things. The Department of Consumer Protection has set out this whole plan of how the dispensaries operate, and they've decided their own criteria of how to uh, approve them, who gets the license, who doesn't. I got to believe in my mind that they did that for a reason because they suspected that it, it might have a, a negative effect in the locations. Otherwise, it would be done at uh, Rite Aid or CVS or any place else that handles prescription medicine. They, 
why not just have it at CVS and go in there and, and order your prescription and walk in and give them your credit card and your medical card and be on your way? Because they'd lose but, their federal license. Like, to exactly. Sell it's, it's, a broader, well, it's a broader issue. Yeah. Okay. So keep that in mind. They, they want them in separate controlled areas. There's also this, uh, if, if you go, I, I think uh, Commissioner Hamaki mentioned it, the Department of Consumer Protection, they have this huge list of frequently asked questions that addressed a lot of the questions that came up tonight. One of them being the 1,000 foot requirement. Someone asked, does it have to be 1,000 feet? No, it doesn't have to be 1,000 feet. There, there is no, the, the regulations do not prohibit a dispensary facility from being located within 1,000 feet of a school or church and so on. The regulations do, however, allow the DCP to consider whether the proximity of the proposed dispensary facility will have a detrimental effect on any place used primarily for religious worship, public or private schools, and so on. So, you know, they're saying they want to look at where these places get located in, in towns. And I just don't think that the Silasine Highway in that small corridor is the place to, to have this. And I just hope you'd consider that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just to shoulder up on Commissioner uh, Hamiki's uh, comment, I thought it was good information here, Peter, provided about Westport in uh, 2016. They adopted regulations uh, with a maximum of two dispensaries in their town, and um, but also with Rocky Hill and Newington in their areas, it looks like by special permit within that zone, that is how you have to go through the process. So maybe a special permit through that in, within the zone. I'm, which is which is how we're proposing which, it. Which is how it's being right. proposed here. Right. Exactly right. Okay. Maybe we could gleam some information from those people. Okay. All right. Uh, have we beat this up enough tonight? Um, Peter will pull some information together. I, I suspect it's as much for each of us to wrap our heads around uh, what the language is saying based on the news we got today. A motion from the vice chair. Sure, I'll make a motion to continue the hearing. Second. And then he beat you to it, George. Second. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Everybody wants to second it. All right. Any, any discussion? Otherwise, all those in favor say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? March 20. March 20? Yeah. Okay. Thank you all for participating. Lively discussion. Uh, do you generally understand um, what's going to happen? So two weeks from now, we would come back together. We will have more information. The, the panel will open the hearing again, uh, you know, continue the hearing. Um, and just to kind of follow the thought process, at some point, if we're comfortable uh, with the information that we're, that we're taking in, that we've got all that we need to, to, uh, to make a decision, we'll close the hearing, deliberate, and come up with a decision. That's how the process works. All righty? That evening. So at that time. Possibly? Yes. And I should have done it up front, so I apologize it took me half an hour to get you there. <laughs> okay, so two weeks from now, and, and I'm sure you guys can talk. We'll talk, we'll talk. Right. We can open up to more bigger part of the town. I don't think it's a good idea. I think it's good to limit it to where we can be. So, I mean, that's that's part of, you know, The what center of town on the, on the South Sea Highway is, this, I think, where it should be. Did you see that? you see the trend? Even in, in storage facilities, they're all. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what the right answer is. I, I don't know, you know, I, I don't know how. Sure. Average person who needs this product feels about going out in public. What are you actually? What are you? What are you telling people to do? To get? What do we have to do to get this changed? That's my question. What What do we have to provide to you to convince you to change this? This. this. What do we have to do? So you, you. Sh 
I'm not going to give you that answer. Every person on this board probably has something. We can't. We can't publicly do that. I, have a, I can't answer the question. I have a, I have a, I have a list that they want. During a so. public hearing, ma'am, you have yeah, your chance yeah, they, to talk. Yeah, hearings closed. And the opposition has a so. chance to talk. I can't even go out and visit you in your yard, even though I do these days, because if I do. I'm hearing you, and there's no one else on the commission okay. can hear okay. you. I, That's I, legal. I can understand this, so this is why I'm asking. Yes. Right. Okay. okay. I yep. appreciate the fact that you know you're willing to have another hearing. You're willing yeah. to hear yourself. Yeah. And you can okay. always come Thank talk you. to the town planner or anyone else on the commission. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you in two weeks. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So. Let me get back to the agenda. <laughs> All right, um, folks. Folks, could I ask you to take it out to the uh, to the hallway? We still have to finish the meeting. Thank you very much. All right, other business, Peter, and the, or the minutes. Is there anything besides uh, moving on to the minutes? Under staff reports, if you want to vote on the minutes, I'll. Okay, just one 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 thing to talk about. Okay, so minutes. Uh, we have. Two of them, two sets. February 6th. Let us deal with the February 6th first. Rich had some comments. I'm not sure if I can't. Which no, one it was? The next one. The next one, okay. I wasn't at the second. All right, so February 6th. Are there any comments? <coughs> George Jeppard, have no, the I don't, uh, have any on that one. All right. Uh, I'm fine. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. All right, so we have a, a motion to approve and a second one. I'm just counting up heads. One, two, three. Four, five, six. There are six of us here that were present at that meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Okay, so you have six yeses. Uh, Julie, can you find the six names? It should be myself, Tony Marsh, uh, Tom Dean, George Oichel, Dave Edwards, Dan Silver. Yeah. Voted positively. All right. February 21st, I didn't read, finish reading it, Mr. Chairman, but that's all right if someone else has it. Read it now. So, uh, <laughs> Rich, did, did you have something? I sent them to Peter. It looked good, what I did. Read. Okay, so so Peter has some edits, and they've I think been they passed were, on to they were pretty minor, Rich, in nature, so. Yeah, it's like I didn't vote on something when I wasn't here. Okay, so I can, uh, if you want to approve it with uh, Rich's noted, and I'll get those to Jul Julie. All right. I'll, I'll move to approve them. Second. Thank you both. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 It's a very similar list to this. I think, it, with the exception of Tony Marge, who wasn't there. Okay, but Julie, you could probably go back to the old list to see who voted yes. Very good, thank you. All right. Other topics, staff reports? So just under staff reports, uh, just to keep you uh, in the loop, uh, I have been meeting with the uh, Bike Walk Weathersfield group on um, creating a bicycle and pedestrian plan for the community. Um, I asked them to uh, put the word out to their members and folks who were advocates for bicycling and, and, and walking and that kind of thing. Um, I probably should have been careful about broadcasting that so widely. We, ha we received an overwhelming interest uh, 25 people or so wanting to actively participate in some sort of uh, process and committee. Uh, obviously, that's a number that's uh, unwieldy. Um, so I wanted to, I don't want to discourage uh, participation. There will be a big community participation aspect to this, but um, I just wanted you to be aware of that, get some guidance from you. We are uh, talking about forming some sort of advisory committee I would like somebody from planning and zoning uh, to participate in that so that at the end of the process you know uh, you guys are at the table this is the bikeways the, the walkways, walkways improvements recommendations yeah the whole you know wide picture in, in the entire community um, how long is it going to be and how it's long, probably how long going to going? take nine months to a year to go through a proper process have you know the public opportunities count me in i think yeah, I might be interested. you 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 got a bike you want to we're gonna make you ride your bike to the meetings just so you know oh, I walk. <laughs> okay um 
So I won't, I won't go to one of these uh, exercise places. That okay. I can tell my, Take my daughter that. I'd rather go out and look at the town. Definitely. So in terms of the broader community, um, you know, this committee, which will have the town engineer, someone from the police department, someone from the schools, um, you know, hopefully someone from the council. Uh, there'll be a whole bunch of staff people. Um, but I don't know how many of the general public, um, you know, normally it's just a simple handful of people who have a particular interest in the subject matter, not, uh, you know, 25 people. Um, so I just want you to be aware, and I was hoping to get some comments or suggestions from, from some of you. Um, as I say, there will be a, a broader process, and we will obviously keep those names so as we go forward we can notify them, but I just wanted you to be aware of that. Um, so I'm not sure, Peter, if it's a conflict for me, but I am working on the Putnam Trail, so maybe I include me, and then I'll see if it's a conflict or not. Okay. No, uh, Peter. Obviously, I'm interested in, in the layout and how it affects the overall. Other than Putnam finding trail. the town has no money to fix sidewalks, for example, they mark them up on my street because I bitched a, lot, a year ago now, uh, the capital budget, and uh, they marked them, but they don't have any money to fix them. Uh, what actually the people have the to people fix have them. to fix them. If you, if there's an example sure. of, of you know short limits today, I went in and asked how many streets we're going to pave this year. But you guys, I know you don't have the money. I asked that town staff. It's limited. And yeah. They, and the manager doesn't even know. Right. I understand that. Yep. But, uh, you know, these are the things that has so a lot to do with it because I think DOT has a, a wide rights of way on two of our major roads mm -hmm. and maybe all the others. And uh, they actually paved them. Yes. You know, not street and, you know, those. those. So uh, it's all of that. Plus, don't forget the meadows and uh, the possibilities down there of. Uh, Going, you know, it sort of should have been something done with that long ago. Yeah, it's all, it's all going to be looked at policies, you know, you know but budgets, but all that. So, so you think, so you, I mean, you want representation from these, yes. Are you, are you thinking of uh, creating a select committee of perhaps one participant of each of the groups? Because my guess is it's not 25 ad hoc, it's yeah. 25. No, I, th you know, uh, the, the committee I itself, know. maybe a dozen people total, not you know, yeah, so of that dozen two or three average you know citizens with a particular interest would be uh, involved so as i say uh i don't yeah, 20, you know, 25 is on you know it's unwieldy yeah it's you it's it, and i and i've explained that to the folks who expressed an interest and i told them to you know hold tight while it's discussed um you know however you know these in order for these plans and recommendations to be successful you need the citizen advocacy so that when the budget process comes around and the capital improvement projects are discussed those people are are there to be paying attention to it so um, you know I, I think the there's going to be opportunity for the larger number of people to be still be pretty active but they just can't they, I can't possibly manage that number of people you know for regular monthly meetings or every other month kind of thing um, and it would obviously also outweigh the number of staff people and technical people. So um, I was just looking for a little bit of guidance. So I was thinking, you know, of, of that list, really probably three of three of them. Um, some of them have provided me with their qualifications, and some of the folks have experience and have been involved and have particular interest, whereas others are just generally, you know, interested in riding bikes and walking and that kind of thing. So, so, so we've, you know, had the same problem in the past and we kind of settled on, you know, a, a, a smaller group, call it whatever you want to call it, a working committee and, and everybody who raised their hand. Cause it's very, you know, it's, it's great that somebody raised your hand and to your point, you want those, that whole committee to be advocates when the time comes to actually do something with the document. Right. So, um, to your point, the big group every three months, you know, but the working committee does all the hard labor and then you bounce it off this, you know, you promise to bounce it off the group of 25 before right. you go to the public discussion so that you can all get behind it. And you got to sell it to them on day one, too. You know, we're not saying no to you. We're saying you got, you've got the inside track, but when, is all, when all is said and done, <coughs> we need you to stand behind us or else you're just kind of messing up the works. Right. right. Okay. So that process will probably uh, start ramping up in April, I, th I think, based on my conversations uh, with them. So we're working on, 
you know, how far we're going to go and uh, how involved we want to get. So we'll, uh, so I've got uh, George and uh, I've got uh, Tony. Yep. Demands to be on there. Yep. I think George will be a lead. I'll be an alternate if there's yep. not a conflict. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Um, we're busy. Uh, so we're finalizing the sign regulations. We're also working on uh, some other regulation amendments. So um, we're trying to figure out. So I may go forward with the sign uh, application re sooner than later and then come in with some other things uh, shortly after that. So store openings, I've seen Pasta Vita looks close. They're the probably common. opening up in mid-April. Uh, they pushed it out a couple times. Um, the ramen noodle place next to the YMCA is open. If you, uh, we were going to have a ribbon cutting Thursday. We've rescheduled that because of the snowstorm. Um, so there's a couple of things well, so like that. Somebody else. The River Cafe uh, in Putnam Park, uh, hopefully, really? will open shortly. Um, so there is the Borden project is uh, evolving a little bit. That's why you haven't seen any uh, construction. Um, Activity we're meeting with the developer next week. Denise is going to set up a meeting because they're talking about doing something in addition to what we approved, um, which we'll have to come back to you too. So I don't know if they're going to separate the two, but um, we'll keep you we'll keep you posted on on that. So uh, and the gas station and the self storage you, or is is maybe going to start next week. Um, so. Um, they're waiting for some DOT um, sign-offs, um, yeah. so that's going to start happening soon. Chipotle, I knew there was another in Chipotle. Chipotle opened a while uh, <coughs> yeah. ago, but um, okay. yeah. Okay. Hey Tony, how much is the assessment going to be on that, those two places? On which one? On those six <laughs> properties. Oh, sure. uh -oh. a couple you meant dollars six? here, a couple dollars there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like a, a medical marijuana. I mean, There's got to be some good cash on that security system alone. I thought he. I, I thought noticed he you asked give, that. Give us a little more detail, <laughs> won't you? Very good. Now we're talking. Right. I will entertain a motion. Motion. <laughs> I'll second the motion to adjourn. <laughs> Thank you all. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. All right. Y Yolanda wanted to stay, but she didn't get the vote. <laughs> You're not going.